It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. From the CBS television news staff, Larry Lasseur and Charles Collingwood. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Edward Howry, chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. Mr. Howry, I understand that the Federal Trade Commission is charged by law to uh, prevent the stifling or fettering of the free enterprise system by monopoly or uh, to uh, save it from corruption by unfair trade practices. But what are your general activities? Well, Mr. Lesseur, we have <coughs> a jurisdiction which staggers the imagination. Uh, we should be, and I believe will be, the most vital agency in Washington. We supervise the competitive practices of our multi-billion dollar economy. In other words, we supervise and regulate business. And as you know, business in this country is really thing of enormous magnitude. Mr. Howery, your commission is now uh, undertaking an investigation of the price of coffee. Is that a good sample of the kind of work which you do? Yes, I think it is. It's the uh, type of thing that we normally get into uh, when uh, there are consumer complaints. We had numerous consumer complaints. So how are you coffee. coming on that? Have you found out why it is that uh, coffee costs us 15 cents a cup now instead of 10? Uh, no, we haven't found that out yet, and uh, uh, I don't know what we will find out. We're making a very fair, honest, objective investigation within the continental United States to ascertain what the situation is with reference to coffee prices, what the supply and demand situation is, whether prices are related to demand. There's been some suggestion that, uh, that uh, high coffee prices uh, uh, are, are not related to demand, that demand is inelastic, that you drink uh, your 10 cups of coffee every day no matter what you have to pay for them. But uh, we're going to ascertain the facts and uh, publish them in an economic report. And one thing that I would like to make uh, uh, clear, very clear, is that we're not investigating any uh, activity outside of the United States. We have no jurisdiction to do that. We're uh, investigating corporations and persons and documents and files and offices within this country. I've been told, Mr. Howry, that letters have been coming into the uh, Federal Trade Commission's office ever since you started the uh, investigation of some health and insurance plans. Now, is that an uh, uh, outstanding violation? Well, that gets into our uh, jurisdiction over advertising. We not only uh, have jurisdiction over price fixing and price discrimination and things of that nature, but we also supervise uh, advertising practices and we received many complaints that uh, some of the claims the benefits claimed for certain policies were exaggerated were misleading were false and we're conducting a general investigation of all uh, uh, disability and insurance programs to ascertain whether they are claiming benefits for their policies that are not uh, in fact within the confines of the policy. Mr. Chairman, uh, while you're on the subject, I'd like to ask you that since your jurisdiction does bear on misleading advertising, do you have any trouble with uh, commercials on radio or TV? Well, I... <laughs> I don't know whether I should answer that on this program, but um, I, I'm compelled to say, yes, we do. That's, uh, we have uh, just as much uh, activity and violation in that field as we do in the press. Uh, you, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there's one field where uh, the radio and the press and the television can, I think, uh, claim uh, equality. 
Well, you won't have any trouble on this program, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, if you investigate all these things and have jurisdiction over them, uh, where does your jurisdiction uh, end and that of the Department of Justice take off? Well, uh, we've been accused of uh, being overlapping agencies, but uh, we're not, in fact, overlapping agencies. We deal with the same subject. That is, when you refer to the Department of Justice, you refer, I assume, to the antitrust division of the Department of Justice. We deal with the same subject matter. We deal with monopoly, restraint of trade, price fixing, unfair methods of competition. But the Department of Justice uh, is primarily the prosecutor, whereas the uh, Federal Trade Commission is an administrative agency composed of uh, economists, marketing experts, lawyers, statisticians. We examine these practices uh, in their incipiency. We are not a prosecutor. Our job is not to punish. Our job is to try to prevent unfair methods of competition. So I like to uh, say we practice preventive law. Uh, we do have our adversary proceedings, of course, but um, we uh, deal uh, with these questions uh, not as a prosecutor, but as a body of experts, at least that's what Congress called us, and uh, we examine the practices to ascertain whether the uh, competition has been injured. If, uh, for example, we, uh, we examined a merger here recently in the automobile field, uh, and uh, they were very small companies, and we felt that that merger would increase competition, would promote competition, because uh, it enabled the merge company to have a more complete line and complete compete better with the big companies. And another merger case, we examined the competitive effects and all the marketing factors, and we decided just the contrary, that uh, competition was lessened and that uh, the merger should not be permitted. So uh, it's not the action, it's not the activity, it's the effect that we look at and try to uh, analyze and uh, if we think it's bad for our the economy we stop it by a cease and desist order if we think it is good for the economy why we leave it alone actually sir do you have uh, enough funds and manpower to see that your uh, cease and desist orders are being obeyed well that's uh, one of our big problems we have outstanding 4,500 cease and desist orders against corporations in this country. We have 8,400 stipulations to cease and desist, which is a voluntary procedure we have to try to stop unfair methods of competition. And we have 180 trade practice rules, which are uh, rules which an industry adopt as sort of their, uh, uh, their I don't like to call it a code because it has no resemblance at all to the NRA days, but it is a set, they consist of a set of rules which govern the industry, but they're voluntary. The stipulations are voluntary and the rules, trade practice rules are voluntary procedures where we try to persuade business to sort of discipline itself. Well, Mr. Chairman, under the previous administration of the Federal Trade Commission, there were charges that the the, uh, the Justice Department was uh, driving against business because it was big, and now there are charges that uh, you are protecting big business. What is your view on that? Well, um, I, uh, I, I think the statement's wrong, but let me put it this way. The Federal Trade Commission has supervision over small, middle-sized, and big business, but we do not look at size or anything of that nature. We look and see what they've done and what the effect is on our economy, what the effect on the consumer is, what the effect on the competitor is. And we try not to have phobias. We try to be objective and judicial and fair in the examination of these things. And if you start calling something big, uh, why then you have to relate it to the industry involved. It may be big in one industry and the same uh, uh,
capital or the same size might be very small in another. So I am sure that the present Federal Trade Commission uh, is uh, going to treat big business and small business and middle-sized business uh, with the same fair objectivity and, uh, and honesty. Well, Mr. Chairman, I ask you as a final question, do you think uh, that you're going to give more weight to the business facts of life or are you going to uh, stick uh, strictly to the letter of the laws that you must administrate? Well, we're going to be very realistic, and I think I can only answer that by repeating that we're going to examine all economic factors and find out what the effect of the particular practice may be. And if uh, we think that it's going to be injurious, we'll try to stop it as vigorously as we know how. But we're not going to presume that it's injurious without examining all the factors. And you don't think, sir, that there is a tendency towards concentration of big business in the country? Uh, the Federal Trade Commission is now making a study of concentration, and I think our study will show that from 1935 to 1950, there's been a slight increase in concentration. That is, the 200 largest corporations have a one or two greater percent of the total business than they had in 1935. But if you break that down in the largest 10 or the largest 20 or the largest 50, it'll show that uh, there's been uh, uh, very little increase in concentration uh, during that 15-year period. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm We're proud to have you here tonight. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry LeSeur and Charles Collingwood. Our distinguished guest was Edward Howry, chairman of the Federal Trade Commission. A priceless attribute of every Longines watch is pride of possession, because it brings to its owner the satisfaction of knowing that he owns the watch of highest prestige among the finest watches of the world. Yes, a Longines watch brings you more than the delight of a beautiful possession, more than the unsurpassed timekeeping of a remarkable watch. For that Longines watch of yours is the one and only world's most honored watch. Only Longines among the finest watches of the world has won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors from government observatories, and a position of preference in sports, aviation, and in science for Easter, for graduation, an anniversary, a birthday, for any important gift occasion, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines. And yet, unbelievably, you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. May we call your attention to the fact that Radio Free Europe needs your support, so please give generously to the Crusade for Freedom. <laughs>